Hello, hello, Alex Kolosko is here, your 40G instructor, and today I want to show you a very cool thing, very unusual, I would say. I'd like to show you how you can shoot jewelry without studio, without lighting, almost without anything. It will be pretty cool. Stay with me for the next three minutes and uh, I'll show you uh, the deal. What you need to have is a jewelry itself, okay? It sits on a white plexiglass, it can be anything, but I want to shoot on white, okay? So just some something that, that where you can put your jewelry on. And then the plate and that will support it, okay? You see I have some uh, arm for the, actually it's a wall mount, but it doesn't matter, I just want to seat it this way, okay? What I'm using to hold it, the piece of uh, wax, uh, this is a dentist wax used for braces, okay? So, this is what you need. Maybe you don't have it, uh, you need to buy. You may need a gaffer tape, okay, gaffer tape. And you need to, a piece of a diffuser. This is the Savage Plastic Heavyweight. Heavyweight is better here. Heavyweight Savage Plastic. And of course, camera and lens, okay? So, what you do is this. The very first thing you need to do is to use the macro lens. There is a macro lens here, I'm going to talk in a minute. And have, make a cone. You see how do-it-yourself cone looks like, just when you do it uh, without cutting anything. You got a piece of your diffuser. You bend it this way, okay? Like this. And you fix it on the hood of your lens, okay? So, this is what I did. And I used gaffer, gaffer tape. Easy, okay? I have a hood here and I'm going to connect it to my lens. And the lens is macro lens, 90 millimeters macro lens, uh, Sony macro lens. Mounted on a camera, the camera is Sony A6300. It's a crop sensor, very little camera, very little camera body. 24 megapixels on a crop sensor, okay? And this is it. And well, no, <laughs> two lights, okay, two lights. Let's imagine you don't have any lights, anything. What you need to have, at least some light, okay? Something that you can hold with your hand, for example. It doesn't matter what kind of light temperature is. Have two of them, okay? You, can, you may have uh, somebody who will hold it for you or I'm using the arm to hold it for me, okay? Since uh, I just want to show you how to do it alone. So this is the LED light, but again, if you have two of the same bulbs, it's sort of flood bulb, I mean flood light for, from construction store, it will work. You just need to white balance it. Okay, so no worry. I'm using the foil uh, to make sure that the light comes to this area, not to everywhere, since it's a flood light. Okay, and let's do this. Now, I'm going to shoot it, shoot jewelry with this setup. We have turned it on our camera. I connect HDMI so you see what is going on through the live view. And you see what I'm doing, right? I'm putting my jewelry inside this cone, just sliding it in, okay? I'm just sliding it in and want to make sure that we have it on the right place, okay? For example, imagine that you don't have, uh, you don't even have the tripod. Nothing. You don't have any studio. You can do it. You still can do it. So, gaffer tapes. Why not? Why not? I need to just make my camera go a little bit up. Okay. Now we have. Uh, I'm seeing what you see uh, on the on there on live view, and going to set the focus. Manual focus. Okay. And going to set a focus somewhere like this. Half press so it's back. Okay, we can even make it, well, let's make it like this. You see the exposure and everything. It's on manual exposure, manual focus, okay? M, M, manual focus, manual exposure. You see that ISO 100, again, not auto ISO, ISO 100. F16, we need to have deep depth of field. If I have press, it will show you a depth of field. You see that the whole ring is on the focus. You can actually maybe adjust it a little bit. Uh, but this is not 
the main thing that I want to show you. Let's do like this. Just want to be a little bit sideways. Okay, focus. Already. Maybe a little bit, make it a little bit nicer. Like this, maybe. Hard to do it without tripod, but let's imagine that we don't have tripod. We don't have anything. Okay, so now, how I calculate that we need 140 of a second f16? Again, easy. I'm getting my light. One light will be somewhere here, okay? One light will be somewhere here because I want to, you see what it's doing? Oops. It's highlighting the back side of our ring. You see the back side, if I close this light, the reflection on the back of the ring will be gone. So this is highlighting back of the ring, this is highlighting our front of the ring. And look at what camera is saying, plus 0.7 exposure compensation, okay? This is at 140 of a second. It has built-in exposure meter, right? So if needed, I can easily change to 130 and it will be plus one. You see what's going on, right? I can go one, I mean, 150 of a second, it will be plus 03. And see what is going on with our ring. It has some nice reflection. When you shoot a ring and when ring facing the camera, this area that you highlight with one light and that area you highlight with another light for the back. That's it. That's simple. If it's, of course, if it's that simple. It can be more, much more complicated. We have courses on this. But I'm showing this to you to inspire. I want you to inspire, to be inspired, and understand that when you know the lighting, it's very easy to do it um, without any, almost any equipment. Let's see, let's make sure that we have nice highlights on the ring. And before I press, what do I do? I want to make sure that it's on, since there is no tripod, camera may be shaking, I'm putting five second self timer. Five second self timer, okay? So, five second. Don't touch anything. Making sure that the ring looks good. Here we go. We have a picture of the ring, 24 megapixel. And if we enlarge it a little bit, What I can tell you, this lighting setup cost me, let's say, how much? $20, $20 for another light. This is nothing, this is nothing. Glow that you need to have, neutral glows, maybe like 50 cents for the pair. This is what I was using to mount uh, the ring. Then what else? This Savage plastic, you can use anything, you can use tracing paper, but this is cool. You can get for $60 the whole uh, roll, I think 15 feet or more, 60 feet maybe, uh, which will work for you for, for entire life if you're going to use these pieces. And this is it. Just showing you a very simple way to shoot jewelry. Of course, of course, it's much more complicated. And when you shoot it uh, for your client, it's not maybe, it may not work that easy. However, if you have some jewelry on, on your own and you want to learn it, you can start from this. This called cone, what I did, we, sh we use it a lot on jewelry. If you want to learn, once you kind of master this technique, you want to learn more, go to 40G, find jewelry courses, you will see the professional way to do it. This is the uh, simplest setup. This is the simplest setup for your inspiration. If you don't have any experience yet, if you don't have studio, you have just some camera, some camera, any camera will work, and what you need to have is a macro lens. Make sure that you have macro lens. This is the must for jewelry. The rest, you see, it's super, super simple.